All right, so we have a bunch of people here on the screen, and what I want you to imagine is that these people have a surplus of funds on them. Okay, so when the average American has extra money in their pocket, they either spend it or they save it, right? But let's imagine that these people on the screen, they don't want to spend all their money, all right? So they want to save some of it. They want to put some of it away. Well, when we think about like what we do as your typical American consumer or American business person, where do we go, you know, when we need to, to bank? And we go to typically what you would think of as commercial banks, like a Wells Fargo or, or even a local bank, maybe like a Marshland Credit Union. But when we want to make deposits, we want to make withdrawals, we want to put our money somewhere, we want to take loans, we do our banking with commercial banks like Wells Fargo. But here's a question. Where do the banks bank with? Where do the banks put excess surplus funds? Where do the banks take loans from when they need to borrow money? The banking system in our country operates such that there is a centralized bank where the banks can do their business with. And so this banking system, this centralized banking system in the United States, is known as the United States Federal Reserve System. And so our banks, the Banker's Bank, is basically the Federal Reserve. Now the interesting thing about the Federal Reserve is that Yes, there is one centralized location. And so this place that it's centralized in is in Washington, D.C. So the central hub, the central location, the headquarters of the Federal Reserve is in Washington, D.C. However, the Federal Reserve System is spread all throughout the United States. All right, before we talk about that, let's lay the groundwork for some points about the Federal Reserve. Okay, point number one, the Federal Reserve has a nickname. It's known as the Fed. And so when you hear about this in the news and the media, a lot of times they refer to it as the Fed. Most modern economies in our world today, in our global economy today, have central banks. And the central bank of the United States is the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve was created in 1913 by Congress. So it is a government-created entity, although it works independently from the government, but it was created in 1913 by the Federal Reserve Act. Central banks are, again, used in modern economies to oversee banking systems and to regulate the money supply, the money stock. At different times, the Federal Reserve will step in or some nation's central bank will step in in order to have impacts on banking or money. So the Federal Reserve is responsible for what we call monetary policy. Monetary policy directly affects things of money, directly affects the nation's money supply or interest rates, or some of the things that we've talked about already. So essentially, monetary policy can either be what we call expansionary or contractionary. You may never have noticed, but if you look at the top of a dollar bill, it actually says, officially, the U.S. dollar is a Federal Reserve note. And you can see it right here at the top of this dollar bill. The dollar bill is a Federal Reserve note. Now let's look at the structure of the Federal Reserve. First of all, again, the central bank of the Federal Reserve is in Washington, D.C. And this central bank is effectively run by a seven-member board of governors. The board is led by the chairman. The current chairman, again, is Ben Bernanke. Ben Bernanke was appointed by George W. Bush in 2006, and then he was reappointed by President Obama. For most of my life, or at least my adult life, this guy here was the chairman of the board. Okay, I mentioned before that the Federal Reserve is in one location in that its central base is in Washington, D.C. However, it is essentially a network. It's a system of banks that all are combined together that make this Federal Reserve system. So it is actually comprised of 12 district banks, and they're all throughout the United States. You can see that here in Georgia is District 6 and that our home bank is in Atlanta. And to give you an idea of how this works a little closer, we can take a place that I frequent, which is Chicago. So my wife and I were recently in Chicago, and we walked right by this building, and this building is the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago, and you can see that there's this little sign here that was on the side of the building, and here's a dollar that has the Central Bank of Chicago's district logo on it. So you can pretty much find any of these districts on your current currency. But these 12 districts make up the Federal Reserve System. And a couple years back, one of my students said, 
Well, this is kind of like the Hunger Games. You know, they have these 12 districts, and once a year they all met in one area. And in the movie, they were there to, you know, fight to the death to see who would be the, the winner. The Federal Reserve sort of works like this. And so the Federal Reserve is, is 12 districts as well. And each year, members from this district all fly in, okay, they all fly in to the headquarters, which is in Washington, D.C., from all over the country to essentially discuss the economy. Okay, so furthermore, each district has a Federal Reserve Bank, and they are responsible for monitoring the banking conditions in this district. They are responsible for reporting how the banking system is doing in their district, as well as the economy. And here's a closer look at it to give you an idea. So again, we're part of District 6. The Chicago Bank is part of District 7. So 12 districts broken up, more easily manageable by Washington and the Central Bank in Washington, D.C. to get information from the banks and the banking system in each district. Here's the Federal Reserve Bank in Atlanta, which is our Federal Reserve System Bank. So to summarize, again, we have the Central Bank, which is in Washington, D.C., and the Central Bank is responsible for overseeing the 12 districts, and the 12 districts communicate with the Central Bank eight times a year in order to talk about things of money. And those 12 district banks are, are responsible for overseeing the economic conditions in their district, as well as the banking system in their district.